uh, I do it at MIT too. And so far, they still haven't gotten the strip music. <laughs> They're laughing, but there are students in this room who are wondering if it's appropriate for her to reveal her body like this in front of cameras and everything. I think I learned enough from here. Uh, I do this all the time. And that's when one of the braver students came down and said to Porter and to Dr. Bruce Korf of the faculty, hold on. Is there not some other place we can do this? Or, uh, I mean, it seems a little awkward in a lecture hall. This is, this is Porter's choice yeah. to do this, actually. Am I correct in that? Yes, this is for the students to learn. It's not see what it is. Porter. This is Porter's request of us. Is there, is there a, a, another location where people who are interested can go to and people who are not, maybe? Clearly, this guy is uncomfortable about Porter's desire for attention, particularly with ABC's cameras there, which does raise an interesting ethical question for medicine and, I guess, for journalism. If a patient wants to do something that the doctor thinks is the wrong thing to do, not harmful, just wrong, who wins? And how do they decide? And she gives me a half an hour. We'll be right back. She comes to my house. Is there a problem? No. <laughs> well, actually, there is. And Dr. Korf, the professor, says, here's the solution. This is 15 years of Porter's decision to do this in a public forum and to do it in this room, which is why we permit it to happen. So if this is what Porter wants, then Porter rules. Exactly. She rules her body. She rules her mind and what she wishes to do with it. And I think we really have to think about that and take that into account. Exactly. Patients are their own advocates, too. And it, it was a very interesting dynamic in that um, our classroom was, I think, acting to protect her best interest, but she was fine with that. And we learned that today mm -hmm. upon reflection. So it's really great that she was able to say, this is what I choose to do. And it was empowering, I hope, for her and for us as well. You could come up and touch, see what it's like. Uh, but the student who'd objected, he turned and left the room. From a college graduate to a doctor has a lot of stormy moments. A lot of them are self-confidence. Can I do it? A lot of them are challenges. Can I master it? But some are intensely personal moments for which you can't easily prepare. You, you mentioned what the pain is like, but could you explain what kind of pain it is? is it sometimes it's pressure pain, and sometimes it feels like being stabbed with an ice pick and having it wiggled around. How often do you feel like that? Too often. It, it's just something you learn to live with, and if you don't, it's, it's too bad. Yeah. Order. Oh, that's nice. Sorry. You said that um, light hugs. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Bring it on. She hasn't had this many hugs for a long time. Any more? You're asking. Oh, that feels good. You're soft. <laughs> And so it went on and on and on. Thank you for asking me. Porter Colley told us later that this day was one of the best days of her life. <laughs> You're inspirational, really. <laughs> for Nightline, I'm Robert Crowich. You're welcome. And joining me now from our New York studio is Robert Crowich. Robert, I wonder and worry a little, as I suspect you do. Uh, that maybe those terrific, sensitive young souls that we saw watching this are going to be just a little bit too sensitive when they get out into the real world. How are they going to survive? Well, it's interesting because I, I did ask the dean that question. I said, don't you worry that you're going to graduate a bunch of people who touch, care, and feel so well that when the world, when they enter the world, they just get run over like a Mack truck. He said, well, it's true we teach to an ideal, to a higher standard. And it's true our graduates will, will expect this of the world and find this in the world. And then they've got to decide what to do. Right? And, and as you talk to the students, did they worry about that at all? No, they felt pretty confident, I think, that they would get more, more efficient at it. And they like the idea of a gap. And I think a lot of them are kind of ready that if the world doesn't deliver what they expect, that they'll just demand that the world come up to them rather than 
relax into the world. It's really, it's almost like a bunch of guerrilla fighters that you're sending out there into the medical community, isn't it? And that might be Dan Fetterman's intention, I don't know, but it would be an honorable thing to do. Incidentally, that, that young man who tried to stop you all from yeah. videotaping at the time that she was going to take her blouse off. I was kind of proud of him. What happened to him? I know he walked out. What he happened? He walked out, to? yeah. We followed him, actually, and he was out uh, outside the building, and we asked him, this was the next day, I think, I said, well, what do you think now? He said he'd been talked to a lot by his classmates in the intervening period, and he'd now come to agree with them and felt that he'd learned a lesson as well. So. Well, it was a wonderful, sensitive piece, and I thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll be back with a program note in a moment. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News.